the heat, the heat required to raise the temperature Q is going to be equal to the mass of the substance times a constant we're going to talk about in a minute called specific heat times the change in temperature uh, that you're trying to pull off here. Okay, So let's go ahead and label this stuff and make sure we're all on the same page. Q. We said Q is what we're calling heat. The unit of this, this should not be a big surprise to you, is the joule. Okay, You'll find out that in physics um, it's very convenient and very neat the way they have it set up. You know, Back in physics one you're talking about potential energy and kinetic energy. Anything to do with energy, even work in fact, was was a means of, of adding energy to a system, really. Um, the units of that are joules. This, when you really think about it, when you light that flame and when you, when you put energy, so to speak, into the material or when you add that heat, it's just a synonym for energy. When I say I add heat to something, it's just a synonym. I'm really saying that I'm adding energy to the thing. And that makes sense because think about, you know, you have a gas coming out of your stove, you know, natural gas, and it's burning with the oxygen, and there's a chemical reaction there that liberates energy. That's why it's hot, and that energy goes straight into the pot. So it's really and truly energy that you're delivering to it. We just, we just use and deal with heat so much in everyday life that we give it a new word. We call it heat because it's, uh, I guess it's just in its own little category because we use it all the time. But it's no different than any of the other forms of energy that you have. It's just a, a sort of a different, uh, a different result that it pulls off being able to raise the temperature of an object. So in this equation, Q is simply joules. It's the amount of joules you're adding or subtracting to a substance. Okay, M shouldn't be a surprise. It's a mass of whatever object we're talking about. Let me ask you a question. If I have a slab of copper in my hand that I can hold in my hand, and I put a, a flame, uh, you know, a Bunsen burner or just a stove flame underneath it, it's going to raise the temperature a pretty good amount. Now let me ask you something else. Let's say I had a slab of copper or some metal, and let's say that it was very big. Let's say this slab of copper was the size of my house, okay, horizontally like this. Or let's say it's the size of a city block. It just goes on and on and on. Let's say it's thousands of kilograms, you know, of uh, material there, and I have the same little bitty burner underneath. Do you think the amount of heat that I'm adding to this slab is going to raise this gigantic slab the same uh, amount of degrees Celsius, the same temperature? Of course not. If you have a small material and I add X number of joules to it, it's going to raise the temperature by a certain amount. If I have a gigantic material that spans a, a city block and I add the same number of joules of heat to it, energy, well the temperature is not going to raise so much. On, on, when you look at the entire material, locally it'll, it'll increase a lot, but when you look at the aggregate of the whole material, it's not going to raise the, the temperature of that whole material um, as much because there's so much more of that material there absorbing that heat. So of course you're not going to raise the temperature as much. So of course the, m the more mass you have here is going to play into um, this relation, and we'll talk more about that in just a second. But that's why it's in the equation. This guy is very important. It's called the specific heat. Uh, let me back up. When we're talking about mass, we're going to be talking about kilograms like we always do. Okay? Specific heat is, um, is a constant in this equation because different materials absorb heat. Uh, the relation between absorption of heat and increasing the temperature is different from material to material. And Let me give you an example. Copper, very, very good conductor of heat. Aluminum, very, very good conductor of heat. That means that I do not have to put a copper pot on the stove very long and that burner is going to heat up that copper very, very quickly because the energy going into the copper, the, the molecular and atomic structure of that copper just absorbs that heat and goes straight into the molecular motion incredibly efficiently, so the temperature is going to increase very rapidly for copper. Now if I take water, forget about using a pot to hold the water, just the water itself. Okay, water, it takes a whole bunch more heat for water to increase the same, uh, the same temperature. You have to suck in a whole, bun a whole bunch of additional heat for water to increase the same temperature that it does for copper. So basically, in a nutshell, water is a poor absorber of heat um, when compared to something like, uh, like copper. And that's why this goes into this equation here, because it depends on the material. So this specific heat is going to be a different number for whatever material you're dealing with. The units of specific heat that we're going to deal with, uh, we'll talk about it in a second, the units are going to be joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. I'm going to write that down here. I'm not going to talk about why the units are this way. I'm going to leave it like that for right now. I want to finish this guy out and then we're going to talk a lot more about why this is defined the way it is. Okay? Temperature. Or I should say, notice this is not temperature. This is delta temperature. 
Delta, anytime you see a delta here, that is the, the change in the temperature, the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So this is gonna be obviously in degrees Celsius in this equation. So you have degrees Celsius here, your specific heat's almost always gonna be given to you with a degree Celsius term, so we're using consistent temperature. So what does this equation mean? You have to ask yourself this question. What it means is, let's say I've got a slab of copper. Let's say we know that it has uh, two kilograms mass. So I know it has two kilogram mass copper. I know the specific heat of copper because I look it up in a table. Let's say I want to raise the temperature of that copper by 10 degrees Celsius. So I know the mass, I know the specific heat, and I know I want to raise it by 10 degrees Celsius. All I do is take this, multiply by this, multiply by this, and what I get out at the end is a number in joules that would be the amount of energy in joules that I have to add to this specific size copper block that I have in order to affect this temperature change that I'm trying to calculate. So you see it's a really a brilliant equation. Whatever you want on the right hand side, you just dump the numbers in here. The mass of the specific size and shape of, of the material you have, the specific heat which is, depends on the substance you have, and then how much I want to raise or decrease the temperature. And what you have there is you're calculating how much joules it takes to do that. And it works both ways. If I'm adding, uh, if I'm adding uh, uh, heat to the system, Q is going to be positive, and I'm going to raise the temperature. And if I'm trying to cool it off, I'm basically going to have a ne negative delta T uh, there, because if I'm trying to cool it off, the final temperature will be less than the initial temperature, and what you'll get is a negative Q, and that means that energy is leaving the system, or energy is fleeing or going away from the material that you have. We'll talk about that a little more here in just a second as well.